name is Sister Faustina and I'd just like to, to share with you a little bit about my journey here to the Poor Clares in Cork. In my teenage years, I lost interest in my faith and as soon as I left home, I stopped practicing. I thought that uh, if if I could do whatever I wanted to, that I would be happy. In my 20s, I went to London and I lived there for four years. And it was during that time that I, I started going to bike rallies. And I loved going, going on the back of the motorbike and just zooming down the road. I felt a great sense of freedom doing this. And um, I also loved um, all the rock concerts and parties and uh, my social life was very good and I was enjoying life and then um, I decided that uh, uh, I would move to Amsterdam and it was really there that that was a very important time for me because uh, I started to question life then. I was in a city and uh, that everything, you were free to do whatever you wanted to and um, I just was wondering, you know, what is life really about? Uh, where am I heading to? Do I want to continue like this for the rest of my life? And um, so at this particular time then, uh, my father was diagnosed with an incurable disease. And uh, I could see that uh, my mother uh, was looking after him and she has uh, multiple cirrhosis. So I knew she needed help in looking after him. So I decided that I would come home to help my mother to look after my father. And um, this was a very difficult decision to make because I knew in one sense I was giving up a part of freedom in my life because I would be moving back into the family home. I've been blessed to be brought up with um, a family that, uh, that is, there was security and happiness there. And, um, but still, I, I wanted to do my own thing. And so this was difficult for me to come back again to, to the family home. And, um, but it was a decision that I never regretted because it was the beginning of my journey back to God. At this time, I was invited to go to the Divine Mercy Conference in Dublin um, by uh, my sister. And I, the only reason why I went was for the day out. But while I was there, I uh, went to confession. And this was the first time I'd been to confession in a very, very long time. And it is an experience that I'll never forget. And I often go back to it because I received so much peace at, the, uh, at that confession. And I knew that God loved me unconditionally. And this, this was what I was looking for, really, but I didn't realize it. I started going to prayer groups then and got involved with youth groups and uh, went to Medjugorje. And it was in Medjugorje that uh, everything really came alive. The sacraments came alive. I believe Jesus was present in the Eucharist. I could see that, that there was young people who were practicing their faith. In Medjugorje, I realized uh, that God has a plan for everyone. And uh, I was wondering what was the plan for me? I was afraid to ask him because I was, uh, I was afraid that I wouldn't be, that I wouldn't want to do what he, would, he was asking of me and that that would be some sort of punishment in me or something for it. I don't know, I, I just was very afraid, very afraid. And, um, but as I grew in my relationship with God, as I prayed more and as, as I listened to what he had to say to me, I realized that God is a loving God and that even if I didn't do what he wanted me to do, he'd still love me. He wouldn't love me any less even if I didn't do it. And uh, so I relaxed a little bit then about it. <laughs> And um, I said, look, what, what, what do you want me to do, God? Uh, I'd like to know what you want me to do. And it was through the power of the praying the rosary that I realized that I wasn't being called to married life. And eventually I realized that maybe uh, religious life was for me. I was at a prayer group one night and uh, I met a, a young lady who was just about to enter the poor cares here in College Road. And uh, I, I, everyone was talking about her, that she was going to an enclosed convent. And uh, I got the opportunity to have a chat with her and I started questioning her. Why, what, what did you do all day? And 
and and where was it? And and as she was talking to me, I thought to myself, thanks be to God, I'm not being called to that anyway. And um, I didn't, little did I realize that I was being called and that God was using her to help me to see what this way of life was for. But after she left, after I, after she entered, I couldn't get her out of my mind. And at this time in my life, I had moved to Cork and I was working in a crash here in the city. And so I had the opportunity to come to the church for Mass. And I was looking to see, is she still there? And uh, I saw her in her in her ordinary clothes first. And then I saw her uh, when she got the habit and the white veil. And uh, I saw her then at the black, getting the black veil as a, a simply professed. And uh, it, it, I had great peace every time I came up to the church. And I said, you know, maybe I'll just try and have a chat with her and see because the idea was going around my head and I felt that not unless I investigated this that I wouldn't have peace so I called to see her hoping that they'd say that I wasn't allowed <laughs> and um, so eventually I, I did get to see her and um, we chatted and uh, uh, I had several visits up and uh, it was as, as I, I realized then that the peace was growing within me, that every time I was coming up and talking to the sisters, the peace was growing within me. They invited me in for a living, and um, when I when I came for that living, I, I just knew that uh, there was something here for me. After the living, I decided to do a novena to the Holy Spirit. On the last day of the novena, I was at Mass, and the priest was reading the psalm, and he said, Commit your life to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. Well, it was like a bombshell had hit my face. I just knew that the Lord was saying to me, make a commitment. And I knew for me that the commitment was to try the poor tears and see if this was for me. And to trust him, to make that leap in faith and trust him, and then he would take care of everything. And sure, it's not the end of the world if it didn't work for me, I could, I'd be free to come out again. So I took that leap in faith and I, and, and I decided that I would join the poor players. And as I did, the peace grew within me. And as I was reflecting back on my life and I was thinking, I was saying, am I doing the right thing here now? And uh, so I looked back on my life and I looked at the different moments uh, of where I was trying to make decisions with God and I knew, I could see as I looked back that when I brought God into my decisions making that I had great peace and I was happy and it all was worked out. So I felt that he wasn't going to let me down now. So that's exactly what I did. I made the commitment and I trusted in him and I never felt so free every time when I made these decisions. That's where my freedom came from. and. That's, that's how it grew within me. And you might say that I'm here in an enclosed order. And how can you feel free in an enclosed order? But it is really, with this, when the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And when you have God living in your hearts, like anyone, you don't have to be in a poor Clare convent to have the Lord in your, in your heart. That's where the freedom comes from. Mm -hmm.